Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fitness Without a Filter podcast. My name is Richard Palfrey, and today we're going to be having another solo podcast talking about social media and younger people. That is to say, teenagers, if you are one, or if you're the parents of said young person, you might find this interesting. Check this out. Where and what is your sweat equity? What measures are you prepared to invest in yourself? Because that's what it is, folks. A higher quality of life and improvements in your quality of life and your health are an investment. Newsflash, everybody, you're always on the diet. I want you to view this as mental fitness. As we all know, aesthetics are not health. If we're absolutely honest, anyone that embarks on a diet is looking to reduce their body fat, not their weight. Weight is just mass. I can take five kilos off you with a chainsaw. You won't be any healthier, but you'll have reached your goal. Okay, in the last week or so, I've been putting out feelers on my social media platforms and talking to clients and friends of mine, asking what topic regarding social media and younger people do you think I should touch on, like points of view and such and such. And I've got some feedback, and so I'm going to talk about that during this podcast for the next 15, 20 minutes or so. All right, it's a, a topic that as we become more and more aware of the consequences and side effects of social media in the younger population, we're starting to see that it's not all positive. So we're going to talk about that today. I say we, me, it's a solo podcast. Right. First off, going forward, I always believe in trying to build rather than tear down and work to see the route ahead and the positives rather than succumbing to hurdles and being the, the negative voice if I can avoid it. So I'm not going to tell you to go and avoid using your phones because firstly, I'm wasting my breath. Um, but just talk a little bit about social media and representation of the images that you might see if you are a younger person. Because, you know, being a little bit older, I tend to see things a slightly different light. Plus, I've got a little bit of an insight from behind the curtain, as it were, given in mind the fields I'm working for a living. So, uh, you know, at the very least... I do think a little bit of restraint on the time and importance people put towards the apps and phone usage would be a good thing. All right. But let's go forward from, from there. All right. So let's talk phones and social media. Okay. The modern world is full of content to absorb your time and such a huge volume out there right now because everyone's got one of these things and everyone can contribute to what's out there means that people are essentially screaming for your attention and your engagement and they will do and say whatever they need to to get that engagement. When all said and done, most media content is out there for revenue. Um, it's It exists to get that attention and hold it because if it can do so for long enough, then advertisers will pay the company, the brand or the individual to associate with them because it's going to bring more eyes to the brand, the products, the company. That's how, how advertising works in all forms of medium. I'm old enough to remember the world before mobile phones. Yes, I was born in 1981 and we didn't have them then. Um, I was about 17, 18 when the first mobile phones came out that were readily affordable, and I've seen them evolve from those hunks of plastic to the indestructible Nokias of my teenage years, all the way through to, oh, wow, they put cameras on them, then color screens, and then smartphones, and now everyone's got a supercomputer, and the, the, the world that social media landed in our laps, okay? And wow, has it changed in that time. Not necessarily all for the positive, but we're going to touch on that right now. So let's talk about the role and influence that social media can have on us, okay? Now, firstly, let's avoid the notion of comparison to the individuals that you're going to find on social media, okay? Especially if you are a younger person, right? Don't go spending a lot of time and stress and unpleasant self-doubt comparing yourself and your lifestyle, your physique, etc., to the people that you'll see as you scroll through your phone. That's going to bring you a whole lot of stress, angst, and emotional torment. It's absolutely not something you should worry about doing okay i know it's inevitable to a degree but don't make it a, a large part of your use and time on a phone and outside of medical rationale um there is no need for anyone to worry about their body type size weight etc unless you have a relevant health issue so again let's take away the idea of comparing yourself to we can you know to anyone you might see we can all look at the athlete or the, the actor or whatever else getting ready for a film role and go hey well they don't look like in bad shape but guess what they're not you, they're not me, they're not, you know, unless you are a professional athlete or you're an actor getting ready for a film where you're going to be mostly shirtless if you're a guy or in a swimsuit a lot of time because you're a woman, your physique is not going to relate to the people you see generally on social media. So let's try and step away from that if we can, okay? Do I think it's important that everyone out there should spend a little bit of time um, trying to have a, a basic self-awareness for your health? Absolutely, of course I do, right? It's never a waste of time to be aware of your own health. It's only a positive attribute to your life to have a little casual consideration for how you eat and maintain a lifestyle that's not entirely sedentary when possible, okay? 
Now, regardless of that, someone else's messages and posts should not be the measure of your sense of self, your worth in the world or the commentary that you need to live by. Yeah? You shouldn't take on someone else's attitudes to products and lifestyle just because someone else is doing it. Now, should you begin any program or protocols that you might see online somewhere, whether that's exercise, fitness, dietary things, supplement this or whatever else, and you for whatever reason might decide this is not for me anymore i don't like doing this this is not the kind of product i want to have in my life this regime is not for me never 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 feel that you can't step away from it okay if you're working with a coach or a trainer or an advisor and all of a sudden you you want to do something different you don't like that person or you want to do something else don't feel like you're going to be bullied to stay involved and keep spending your money and give your time and if you don't feel like you can do that in person to this coach or whoever then ask someone to do it for you or do it via an email or a phone call or a text message, okay? Because if something's a negative influence in your life and you really don't want to be part of it anymore, then you should remove yourself from it, all right? So let's go on from there and, and think about uh, social media as a whole then, all right? Social media, although imagined initially as a way to connect people, if you think back to the origins of Facebook, it was supposedly going to be an online version of uh, a cork notice board like you'd have in a school corridor where people just stuck notices and pictures on it and everything else, and you could see your friends and they could see yours. Um, essentially, now, it exists for people to portray themselves in the way that they would like to be perceived, not the reality. Okay, It's mostly fiction and relies on the fact that there are more people out there willing to be dishonest and keep portraying themselves in a certain way than there are that are going to walk away. That's how it's, it exists and expands. You think about what uh, most platforms are now compared to what were three or four years ago, with the arrival of filters and you can change this and you can have the app for Photoshop on your phone so you can quickly edit photographs and videos and all this kind of stuff. People are trying to portray things far more in a fantasy light than they are in the realities. Okay, now, So celebrities, fitness types, male or female, are pretty much the avatars for themselves and the media that they want to represent. They're almost a billboard for lifestyle, clothing, holidays, locations. I mean, I live in Dubai, and you've no idea the amount of people I see in various landmark locations going, look at me, taking a picture of myself in front of this hotel or this sports car or, or whatever else it might be. And I can tell you, for most of them, they don't have the money to own the car, own the products. They sure as hell don't own the houses or stay in the penthouses of the hotels in front of but they're trying to portray the image, all right? Now, these images are prevalent everywhere because of sales, as I was saying, okay? If you can get a big enough audience, then you will end up attracting probably some kind of brand association because it's just eyeballs on the brand itself. They don't really care about who you are. It's a case of this is essentially free advertising for us. If you give uh, attractive individual an item of clothing and say, wear this for X number of posts in the next six months, well, essentially for you, that's cost you one T-shirt, one swimming costume, one suit, whatever it might be. This person has got a few hundred thousand eyes, probably going to get more sales out of that than the money you've just given away. So it translates into profit. Okay, it's a loss leader, that's what we call it in marketing. So remember then that the media being delivered to you is so convoluted that most of the time you're not going to recognize the people that you see there in person. Take away the, the makeup, the lighting, the filters, the additional aspects that can be altered via tools like I talked about, like Photoshop and the other apps. And the genetic gifts that people that you see um, from mum and dad for the person that's in the picture or the video and the possibility of uh, eating disorders and maybe some pharmaceutical assistance in, in whatever form that might be. And then you remember that this is all about attention. This is all about form of advertising on a platform that doesn't actually charge most people to actually watch it. Okay, so very few things you're going to see are going to be genuine. I could mention a few names here, but I won't um, when it comes to uh, presence on social media, YouTube, etc. That is entirely bullshit, especially when it comes to the fitness world. I'm talking about my professional fields here. Um, unfortunately, again, there are enough people that are gullible enough to believe the rhetoric that's delivered and, and the images they see in front of them. So they're going to go, you know what? I'm not going to look for a seriously qualified professional coach or a trainer or a fitness individual uh, that primarily only posts whilst wearing a polo shirt and trousers in their office. I'm going to look for the person out there that isn't really selling themselves based on an intellectual basis, but it's because they're wearing very small lycra or mostly nothing, and they're doing some wacky, bizarre shit in a gym or somewhere else, and therefore that gets them an audience. Now, it might sound harsh, but trust me, that's absolutely true. Okay, so going beyond that then, let's think about social media and body image. Now, 
body image is a topic that more, more people are aware of because we understand the misrepresentation of body types and fixation on one or the, or the other can negatively impact our mental health. It can have a, a deeper impact than we've probably ever thought at any point in the past. Now, it's a topic that a lot of people are aware of, but it isn't really given the, the importance I think it probably should do. Um, and more likely when the topic is raised, it's generally done with the agenda of pointing a finger at one angle of commentary or one community or one kind of physical stereotype. You know, that can manifest itself in fat shaming on the one hand or fit shaming on the other, depending on who you listen to at any given day. Now, firstly, there is no correct or right size for a man or a woman, okay? I have never, ever told a client of mine in my entire career they need to be this weight, this size, they need to be able to wear this clothing, etc. The only thing to consider is, is someone's physicality impacting their health? Are they unhealthy as a result of the lifestyle they currently lead? Then... That is a point in time which you have a conversation to go, this is now going to shorten your life, it's going to cause you pain, it's going to impact your physical health, your quality of life, and ultimately have serious side effects. No one should be bullied because of their looks, their choices, or the shape or size of their body. Now, I don't think anyone out there disagrees with that. It's important to note that for the individuals and groups that are online, a lot out there seek to deliberately misrepresent information and scientific facts about what's healthy and what's not to build a credibility for themselves and build their own fan bases. Um, now, there are those out there that are going to preach extreme diet and exercise and really rigid, harsh dietary habits that uh, may get you this, you know, the, the ripped physique, which I'm doing in you know, those words in big inverted commas, which you can't see because it's an audio platform. And for those that speak, you know, question that mindset and that attitude they can become at least mildly abusive and they build a following with this attitude it's like yeah you know screw you we're hardcore you are not blah 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 now on the other side of that the exact um, polar opposite you look at the kind of things as we are fat acceptance and healthy at every size uh, which is generally the you know the, the larger man or woman although it's predominantly these groups predominantly are women that's a whole different conversation and Whilst the message here is, in essence, a good one, which is we don't want, you know, we are larger people, we don't want to be bullied and harassed and have life made unpleasant for ourselves, which I absolutely support. Again, it's an anti-bullying message. It's also a collective group, which tends to go to the same extreme as the crazy exercise types, which they deliver a message based on making themselves sound awesome. If you do look into these groups, and believe me, I have, there is quite a bit of disingenuous uh, commentary and narrative coming from them because they're seeking to draw together a community of people who don't have their own best interests at health, uh, best interests at heart, sorry. And indeed, you'll get them telling people that they're not, they're not fat enough, they should be larger. The, the hidden message there is self-neglect is a positive and no one can tell you otherwise, which of course is not true. And these groups, like the other extreme, tend to get abusive towards people who would ask questions and, and comment on this. And especially when people leave their collective communities. Now, I brought this up, these examples to illustrate that whilst there are vastly different body types and lifestyles, um, an awful lot of what you will encounter on social media is doing so with the interest of representing themselves in the best light possible because it benefits them to do so. Okay, Humans exist across a, a spectrum of physicality. There's tall, there's short, there's broad-shouldered, there's the slighter build, there's the heavier set, there's the leaner, there's the more agile, and there's the not-so-agile, and so on. You know, Part of the reason why I love the career that I have is because I get to work for people, with people from a vastly you know, varying collective of, of, of humankind. We'd all like to eat a bit healthier, but sometimes it's just hard getting the right ingredients in or knowing what meals to make in the time frame that you've got. So I put together four unique books available on my website right now that can help you make all those decisions, have the best nutritional start to your day, and start to make some real impact in improving your quality of life. Okay, so you can go to my website, www.thebodyengineer.training, and go to the online store. There are four books there for you right now. There is the 52 High Protein Recipes, Quick and easy five ingredient recipes. That's a fantastic good starter book. If you're trying to improve your, uh, your meals. You go to vegan recipe book and the keto guide. Okay, all available for fourteen ninety nine. Listen to this podcast, get a discount if you use the code POD twenty. If everyone was the same, I find it very boring, and I would do something else. All right, that's something that should always be taken into consideration. We are all different in some way. Now, most of that is a result of genetics, and then we have influencing factors from our lifestyles. 
So there is always going to be an added set of factors that influence our physicality and our health. Now, when we consider physiques, um, as I said, it's important that we focus on our own health beyond anything else. All right. So I'm going to sum up the idea of physique uh, in this way, okay, for uh, teenagers out there that might be experiencing some sense of comparison from the social media imagery and TV and movies, et cetera, et cetera. Aim to be as competent at being healthy as you can, given your circumstances and personal preference. I can't sum it up any more concisely than that. This is to say that given however busy you are with school and maybe a part-time job and your hobbies and family life and everything else, with the routines that you have in your home life and your personal preferences, aim to think of your health as something that's important to you, relevant to you. Okay, You don't have to try and become a special forces soldier or an Olympic athlete. Um, but you shouldn't ever think that living in a state of complete neglect is a good thing. You don't need to be exercising like a crazy person. There's a very obvious truth to the notion that an active body will always be at least slightly more healthy and hardy and resilient than an inactive one. It, you know, If you're moderately healthy and moderately active, then you're going to have a healthier immune system, stronger bodily functions, and a degree of self-confidence because we all know that people who are physically aware at least feel better about themselves than someone who has that ability removed from them or neglects themselves to, to some degree. Okay, That also has a, a knock-on effect to your, to your mental health. And believe it or not, your gut function, that is to say your digestion, it's also linked to your physical movement. There is a degree of, of collaboration going on there. So what about if you don't like sport or formal exercise? That's okay. Think more towards hobbies that will get you moving outside, even if it's by yourself. You don't have to take part in a sport or, or regimented exercise. Certainly being active is a good enough thing for you to be doing if you're not someone who relishes the idea of group activity. Now, believe me, walking is one of the most underrated and useful forms of exercise that you can do. So I've told several of the younger people I've ever worked with that don't necessarily like the idea of jumping into exercise right from the off. You know, these days everyone's got a portable sound system on them, as we used to call it way back in the day. It's called your mobile phone. So get yourself some earpods or earphones, find yourself some podcasts you like to listen to, your favorite music, and just go for a walk while away, 10, 15 minutes at a go or more if you've got the enthusiasm for that. Just listening to something, find a bit of mental space that suits you, and off you go. Do that on a frequent basis. If you did that half an hour a week, from from a point of doing nothing well straight away you're doing two hours a month of exercise that you weren't doing beforehand and build up from there that at the very least is something positive okay it doesn't have to be a class thing it doesn't have to be a gym thing just start to think about your health if you haven't in the past as something that's in your own best interest and at a level that suits you I, that's probably the best advice i can ever give you on that topic all right so let's think about food and that as well now similar to body image with this one you should be able to eat what you like without being forced into a sense of guilt or being bullied. I, I stay with that in a, a very strong sense, okay? You should not be bullied into, you can't ever eat that, that's bad, blah, blah, blah. However, there is obviously the, the notion that some things are healthier for you. And as a, a physical entity, we would sooner be healthier than not, all right? It's a very true thing that what we eat directly affects our physical abilities and our health, as well as our brain function. If you eat poorly, your concentration suffers, your focus suffers, and your energy is generally crap, okay? So if we eat with a higher awareness of good nutrition, that benefits our mental acuity. We can concentrate better, we can focus more, we can have better conversations. It relates to our self-esteem, our happiness, our energy, and if you're of a, a certain age, I'm not gonna comment on that, your libido as well, okay? A body fueled by lower quality nutritional choices is not gonna be as healthy as one uh, that makes regular better options okay that's not to say that you should demand some unrealistic home environment if you're still a teen living at home with your parents but you know work with your folks if you don't think you are necessarily working in your own best interest right now but just be aware okay there's a whole load of circumstances involved in running a household as a single parent or as two parents with kids and very quickly the, the notion of eating quote unquote healthy can become expensive all right so think and eat healthy it shouldn't be a chore it shouldn't be massively financial financially crippling uh, it shouldn't be a time-consuming exercise either. Okay, it's much, much more easier to start making decisions based on the better of several options and work from there than it is to set yourself a whole new regime and, and break the bank and and drive yourself crazy whilst you're trying to do so. All right, it's much better, as I said, to make the best of the options you can have, and yes, have those indulgences now and again. Have the things that you like. Have the desserts. Have the sweets, the chocolates, the the, the things that you know aren't the best things for you to be eating. But as I said, make them indulgences, things you enjoy now and again. 
they're in your life all the time that's no longer an indulgence that's basically a a self-fulfilled food group where you lump all the things that you know aren't good together and that will not do the best when it comes to your health okay now you may be someone that sees no reason at all why you can't have the same old routine of the slightly lesser quality foods and say screw you to anybody including me that may suggest otherwise that's okay now it's, that's your choice i wouldn't waste my breath and energy trying to push another approach onto you but if you were to ask my professional opinion i'd always try and present you and anyone else who asked me the same question with some fact-based reasoning as to why your youthful metabolism may be hiding the effects of a, a less than healthy uh, set of choices right now. But believe me, over time, that isn't always going to be the case. So it will pay you to make the, at least become aware of those kind of healthier choices now and incorporate them a little bit into your life if you can. All right? The same can be said for being active. You don't have to choose to do anything right now. That's your choice, but my response will always be the same. A little bit of time spent on your health at this point in time is always going to be beneficial for your future all right from this i'm going to wrap up now i said 15 20 minutes and i've gone just slightly over that avoid like the plague basing your sense of self-esteem and your health and any kind of bodily goals and attitudes on what you see in social media yes there are going to be some things out there that are quote unquote motivational and inspirational and all that and that's not a bad thing but however think of um the the broader scope of social media in the same way that one of my history uh, professors told me once when I was at school. Always, always, always consider the source and the motivation for what you are seeing in front of you, all right? Think about why the person or the company or the brand has put this out there, what it is they're trying to say and what they want from it. And that should steer you in, in a good direction, okay? Now, think back to what I said about how literally all that represented may be dishonest or at least a little bit of a misrepresentation and that should help you out when it comes to thinking about what's a good influence or perhaps not so much on social media when it comes to thinking about yourself and body types and how you should go about living your life all right and you should be okay from there right that's it from me thank you very much for listening folks i'm going to have a regular episode coming out now once a week where i talk about topics just like i have on today take care since this is december i wish everyone out there the best of the christmas and festive holidays have a great time have the desserts the alcohol not if you're a teenager um but uh, have a good time enjoy the approach to the new year and i'll speak to you soon Bye.